second of the three memorials, all dedicated on the same time in 1891, the 12th Illinois Cavalry. General, Bu General Buford had under his command uh, two brigades of cavalry. Uh, these men were under the command of a man named William Gamble. I'll tell you more about William Gamble, who commanded the brigade. Uh, included in that brigade was the 8th Illinois Cavalry. We saw their memorial. The 12th Illinois Cavalry, the 3rd Indiana Cavalry, and the 8th New York Cavalry, all here on McPherson's Ridge. Four uh, regiments under the command of William Gamble. Uh, these men, very similar to uh, the 8th Illinois Cavalry, would fight with Buard, would fight that delaying action, and would delay the Confederate advance for some two hours before the arrival of the Union infantry, ultimately securing this ground and saving the high ground south of town. So they are deserving as, as much recognition as any of the soldiers who fought here. Interestingly enough, as you look at the memorial, again, the memorials are symbolic, and I'm drawn to the fern. The fern is the ancient Victorian symbol for humility. So these soldiers who fought here bravely for their country, uh, many of their names are never known, and they never made it a point to spread their their fame around the country. They were happy to render good service for their country, but essentially keep it quiet. If only we could see more of that in our nation today. <laughs> Interestingly enough, these four uh, regiments of cavalry fought under William Gamble, who was also from Illinois, and I'll tell you a little bit more about him, since very few people associate William Gamble with the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, keep in mind how the uh, armies were organized. Someone asked me to talk a little bit about army organization. Usually the uh, soldiers were formed up into regiments. At the beginning of the Civil War, a regiment had about a thousand soldiers. Remember, the war had been in progress for over two years before this battle. So most of these regiments, there had been a lot of men killed or wounded or, or just sick. And uh, a typical regiment at the time of the battle had about 400 men in it. That was the kind of attrition rate in these regiments. And these uh, regiments from Illinois were no exception to that rule. So each of these regiments represent about 400 men, uh, more or less. Uh, they're all part of brigades. There's four or five regiments in a brigade, so a brigade has about 1,500 men in it. Uh, a brigade is part of a division. There's three or four brigades in a division and several divisions in an army corps. And then these army corps are part of the armies. The U.S. Army had seven infantry corps here at the battle, and the Confederates had three infantry corps here. But because the Confederate um, corps were made up of more divisions, they were much larger. There were 20,000 men in a Confederate corps. So their regiment, they're organized from the bottom up regiments, brigades, division, corps, and armies. The two armies that fought here were the Northern Army of the Potomac, led by Union General George Gordon Meade, and the Army of Northern Virginia, led by Robert E. Lee, who himself once served in the U.S. Cavalry uh, before the war, serving in Texas. Uh, so the 12th Illinois Cavalry, led by William Gamble, just a, a picture of William Gamble, I'll circulate that around, since I think he is uh, one of the humble soldiers who fought together with these men from Illinois. He was a civil engineer and Union Cavalry officer. He was born in Ireland, like so many soldiers in the Army were. These immigrants came to this country. Uh, he, he settled in Chicago in 1843 and worked as a civil engineer for the Board of Public Works in Chicago and lived in Evanston. His house is now used by the Anthropology Department of Northwestern University. All right. He was appointed Lieutenant Colonel of the 8th Illinois Cavalry Regiment in 1861. He was nominated for that post by a U.S. Congressman from Illinois, John Farnsworth. John Farnsworth's nephew, Elon Farnsworth, was killed here at the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, for a time, he saw service in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Uh, William Gamble, who commanded this brigade, uh, was given command of the 8th Illinois Cavalry in 1862, and in 1863 he was promoted, uh, fought at the Battle of Chancellorsville, and here at Gettysburg. Uh, he continued to fight in the American Civil War, uh, ultimately retiring as a brigadier general. Uh, he would die of cholera in Nicaragua, of all places, after the war. So William Gamble, uh, unlike Buford, has no monument here, and yet this Irish immigrant fighting for his new country, humble in his service, also deserves recognition as a son of Illinois. One more thing. 
Unlike any of the other Illinois monuments on the battlefield, this one has the Illinois coat of arms, the same coat of arms that's on this flag. It says State Sovereignty National Union, 1818, the year of the statehood for Illinois. Sometimes you will see the date August the 26th, 1818. August the 26th was the referendum by the people of Illinois to approve the request to join the Union for Statehood. On December 3rd is our actual statehood day because that's the day that Congress passed the law making Illinois the 21st state uh, of the Union. So that's, that's a, the same crest from 100 years ago is on the Illinois flag right now. The only difference on this flag is that in 1968, during the Vietnam War, uh, the Navy, uh, some U.S. Navy officers from Illinois said that it would be easier to identify our state flag if the word Illinois were printed below the state uh, seal because so many state flags look alike. So that's when we added the word, word Illinois was just 40 years ago in 1968.